I don't know, can you call it a unicorn if there's more than one? I'm going for it. We found another one. Actually, it found me. That's right, folks. A shipping crate, and it is mint. This is a 1991 Dodge D250. It's got the Cummins engine. It's got the four-wheel drive. It's got that beautiful 1970s Chrysler styling. I think I'm in love. Go ahead and load up your survivor bias. They don't make them like they used to. Yeah, obviously she's got some paint issues on the hood and the roof. But overall, I mean, for a 31 year old Rust Belt truck, this thing is basically mint. Sweet two tone paint job, factory pinstripe. Towing mirrors, it's the LE. Yeah, super clean interior, classic wood grain dash. I like the gray. I was expecting some horrible blue. Automatic four wheel drive. 80,000 miles, never driven in the winter. I mean, it's got a little bit of patina, but that's it's pretty much rust free. Yeah, tailgate's a little banged up. But I mean, she's a survivor. Just look at her. Anyway, got some new tires to install. Uh, the big thing we're gonna do is the killer dowel pin. This truck has the 12 valve Cummins engine. Somewhere. There it is. So this has the rotary VE pump and it's intercooled. Yeah, pretty clean under here. Oh, sweet train horns. These trucks were rustier than this when they were a year old in our area. Yeah, front axle U joints are tight. Bearings are good. Minor oil leaks. I mean, that's really minor for a, for a Cummins. Barely dripping on the floor. Transfer case is leaking a little bit. Probably not anything to be concerned about. Even the brake lines look good. And it does have rear ABS, which probably doesn't work. Yeah, exhaust is rusted through or broken, I don't know. It's the only real problem that I see down here. I mean, normally these spring hangers are all rotted out. Fuel tank straps are rotted in half. This thing looks really good. I'm not too impressed with this hitch though. Look at that tiny little thing. So if he wants to tow anything with it, he's gonna have to get a better hitch. All right, we're gonna start with the killer doll pin. Isn't it left hand thread? I wish it was a manual transmission, we just put it in gear. Hmm, 
what can we do? Just gonna measure the air gap on this crank sensor. Should be around 40 thousandths, I think. Yeah, there's 38. That's close enough. That worked. Okay, did I get them all? Guess so. All right, the killer dowel pin. It's pretty tight quarters on this truck. I'll try to show you with my phone. That's it right there. So that dowel pin aligns the timing cover to the front end of the engine. And it's supposed to be a press fit, but you know, nothing rattles like a Cummins. And in some cases, that dowel pin can loosen up and it can actually fall out of the timing cover. And when that happens, well, the best case scenario is it just falls down into the oil pan, doesn't hurt anything. Kind of the middle of the road failure is when the dowel pin goes between this gear and the timing cover and it breaks the timing cover. The worst case scenario is when the dowel pin gets between the gears and then yeah, you pretty much have a paperweight. I mean, it, it could destroy the whole front end of the engine, break the camshaft, you know, break the timing cover, break the, the front of the block. It's a bad situation. And this affects all of the engines in this series, the 4BT, the 6BT, as well as the 8.3 Cummins. And it goes up into the early years of the 24 valve Cummins, and then they finally, they finally fixed this problem. And Cummins, claims that around 5% of engines will experience that failure, which is a lot of engines, if you think about how many of these they made. So the fix is pretty simple. We're gonna pull out this bolt, and I made a little retainer just out of a piece of wire that I bent. We're gonna put that piece of wire underneath that bolt, and the end of the wire is gonna hold the dowel pin in place. Now let's go ahead and pull that bolt out. Don't drop it in the oil pan. All right, I'm gonna modify that just a little bit. Okay, put a little bit of Loctite on that bolt and then tighten it to 18 foot-pounds. All right, that's our repair. Pretty simple. I mean, most of the labor is just getting down to it and actually, if you don't want to make up a retainer, you can just peen the timing cover here so that the dowel pin can't possibly back out. But this will give us a little extra insurance. All right, clean it up, put it back together. We're all done. I knocked out the old seal and cleaned up the cover. The original gasket is installed on top of the paint. I prefer to scrape the paint off and clean that right down to bare metal. So I think we're ready to start putting this back together. This is the new seal. 
that comes with this gizmo here, that goes on the back side, and that's going to set the depth of our seal. So we'll stick a chunk of wood down here, and then oh, we don't need this plastic sleeve, at least not right now. Put a little bit of this 515 on the outside of the seal. Don't be like that. really nice to have the factory install tools for these seals. Come on. There it is. Alright, now we'll use our our factory install tool. Perfect. Seems to be very important that you install this seal dry. Do not lubricate the the lip. Yeah, these timing covers are notorious leakers. So I'm gonna put some aviation permatex on both sides of the gasket. At least give it a fighting chance. All right, we'll let that tack up for a minute, then we'll coat the other side. Here we go. If you can do this without becoming a big sticky mess, my hat's off to you, because I sure can't. All right, let's get a bolt in it here. All right, now I gotta try to shove that seal through that plastic sleeve. So, pull the sleeve out. Beautiful. Okay, torque to 18 foot pounds. All right, we're gonna try our same trick here. Look that groove in the damper. Torque these two. Oh gosh. Too short again. Like I was saying, torque to 100 foot pounds. No, that's not right. Torque this to 92 foot pounds. There it is. Not too shabby. I think that's about as far as we can go for right now. The belt is shot. So I ordered one. Won't be here for a couple days. So we're gonna move on to something else. All right, new tires are installed, but I found a new problem. I was not planning on messing with the rear brakes, but that amount of crud stuck to the brake drum leads me to believe that we have a bad wheel seal. It's 
Somebody's been here before. Little lock tabs broken. Let's try two and nine sixteenths. Should be close enough. See if we can do this without dying. Just dragging on the brake shoes. Suspicions confirmed. It's not blown out, but it has been leaking a little bit. So let's replace it. There we go. Yeah, bearings are fine. Just needs a new seal. Okay, got the hub slash drum cleaned up. Everything looks good, bearings are good. Got a new seal. I just packed the backside with grease. So hopefully the spring doesn't pop out on us. Max, buddy, I know there's a mouse over there. You can't get it. We need the whole world to know about it. Uh, brake shoes, hardware, everything looks real good. So we're gonna put it back together just like it was. I did back the brakes off just a bit. The adjusters were not frozen. Okay, we're supposed to tighten this to 120 foot-pounds. Which is a lot. There we go. Now we're supposed to back it off one eighth of a turn. So there that's supposed to give us one to ten thousandths of end play now well, let's just see Still not. Is there a procedure room? There we go. So that's about a thou and a half. That seems about right. And actually, we can see where the old mark was from the wedge. We're pretty darn close. Good enough, I think. This is a pretty hokey system here. Jam that guy in there. That's it, we're set. And 
And yes, before I get 9,000 comments about it, I did do the other side. There we go. I'll have to find a torque spec for those. Probably should have done this before I put the axles back in. The way I was always taught was you just adjust them out until you can just hear them drag. Man, hydraulic drum brakes are such a pain in the ass. That's pretty good. Don't worry, if they're too tight, they'll self-correct. Man, I am not ready for snow. All right, front brake time. I think I got all the parts. Spray her down with some Weasel Whiz. Cross all of our fingers and toes. Possibly most of these will come out. It's not looking good so far. Nope. Not a chance. There we go. No problem. Max, why are you just shaking, pup? He's not a cold weather dog. Yeah, we gotta take a little trip down memory lane to do these brakes. They don't build them like they used to. Thank God. These things are really complicated. Actually, this isn't as bad as like the, the, uh, uh, the automatic locking hubs like the ones on the Ford F-150s. I mean, they're still stupid, but... I guess we better get that caliper off there. I forgot about that. Pull out the wedge. This is a Dana 60 axle. It takes this special four prong socket. There's a smaller four prong socket for the Dana 44s and 50s. 
And then there's also a six prong socket for some of the newer axles. Come on. There it is. And then the inner nut. Shouldn't be tight. Now we'll go ahead and thread our nut back on the spindle. And we'll use that to pull the seal. Otherwise I'll get 900,000 comments telling me that I should just use the nut to pull the seal instead of hammering it out. There we go. Now no one can complain. Well, whoever was in here before certainly wasn't shy about the grease. <laughs> Bigger the glob, the better the job, right? The inner nut has this little nub. It needs to face out. <laughs> well, if I understand the setup procedure correctly, we're supposed to tighten it tight to seat the bearings and back it off. We did that. And then we're supposed to go to 40 foot-pounds. Sounds pretty good. Now we're supposed to back it off 135 to 150 degrees. So let's see. That'd be 90. And then horizontal would be 180. So 135 should be about there, I think. Work. All right, now we tighten the outer jam nut to 65 foot pounds. Yeah, it's like nine. All right, we'll tighten it up a little bit. I don't like that. All 
That's better. About five. We're gonna call that good. I cleaned up the back side of the locking hub the best I could. Put a little dab of sealer on the on the O-ring. It should be fine. 832 by inch and a half socket head cap screws were not easy to find, so we're gonna have a weird a weird mix of stainless and black oxide. bit of anti-seize around the heads. It's not the threads that get corroded, it's the, the head gets corroded. Okay, that's free. That's lock. Back to free. Cool. Now the fun part. I believe this is a Bendix brake design. But if there's a more ignorant way to mount a brake caliper, I haven't seen it. wedge back in. That's where things get tricky. There we go. Now you're probably thinking, man, that's tight. How's that caliper ever going to slide? You'd be right. You get a little bit of our old friend salt in the mix and you've got some uneven pad wear. This is a terrible design. I'm just tilting the axle so the fluid will run from the center out to the hubs. And we'll go ahead and top that off. Yeah, I think we're done down here. Transfer case leaks, obviously. It should be resealed at some point, but not today. I did drop the transmission pan, change out the filter and fluid, change the oil on the engine, grease the front end. Yeah, brakes, tires, new coolant. I think we're almost done. Okay, took two tries, we got the right belt. Shroud's back in, I think we're all set. Feels like the aisle might be a little bit high. But it runs like a champ, of course.
Doesn't stop. Yeah. The brakes aren't fantastic on these trucks. Well, you guys probably can't see anything. But trust me, it's definitely a Dodge. It rides like a lumber wagon. It's all over the road. Door seals leak. Yeah, pretty much tip top. Does it stop? Oh yeah. Beautiful. I'm pretty sure that's just a regular old three-speed automatic, no overdrive. But it cruises right down the road, it must be geared pretty high. My brother's got one of these with a five-speed manual. With your foot welded to the floor, it'll go about 57. Yeah, pretty nice old truck. Now, sorry, you guys probably can't see anything. The sun goes down about four o'clock this time of the year. Did you get that mouse, pup? Huh? The one you were whining about all day? I don't think you did, because I caught three of them in the traps last night. All right, folks, we're done with the Dodge, at least for now. I got some minor stuff to do. It needs shocks, and we might go ahead and change the fluid in the front and rear axles. But yeah, for the most part, we're done. What was I going to say? Oh, I need your help. I've got the 95 Dodge. It's going to have another video about it coming, hopefully, hopefully after this one. Got kind of out of order. Doesn't matter. Anyway, he's still complaining about the front end, you know, being loose or vibrating or something. I mean, to me, it's a typical Dodge, but he wants to try to make it better. And I don't know what to tell him. So if you have, if you have experience fixing the front end issues on a 94 to 90, whatever it is, 2001 or whatever Dodge, and you know for sure of something that will work, leave me a comment below. Don't send me an email that's turned into just a bottomless pit. Leave me a comment, tell me what I should look for. Some guys said to go to the newer style tie rod. I don't know, there's all kinds of offset ball joints you can get. So if you have suggestions, type them out down below. If you don't have any suggestions, don't worry. You're in the same boat as me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.